What's happening, everyone? Welcome to the Sportscast. It's me, Andy Grant. I've got Gary Judge from Across the Park Podcast. Man. And we're here to talk last weekend's of sport, this midweek sport, and next weekend's of sport. What I will say, first off, if you are a fan of the Squid Game, you might have saw that I made a little two-second cameo up. appearance in it. On this week's Patreon, just gone, uh, I basically gave a behind-the-scenes um, fly on the wall, what happened, dispelled any myths and told you what it was really like. If that's your kind of thing, that's on Patreon now. Really good. As well as our this weekend's football tips. Didn't want to have a bet last weekend because it was just... Yeah, it wasn't... For the, uh, yeah, it wasn't... The sake of it. Yeah. Loads of FA Cup and loads of postponements because of the weather. So that'll be out this weekend. And again, the support would mean a lot. Right, straight in then. Loads of footy to be talking about. One quick apology. This is being recorded on Tuesday, so before the midweek before matches. Or the Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday fixtures. Yeah. So... If something dramatic happens there and we haven't mentioned it, that's why. What I do want to first off talk about is uh, Man United, if you don't mind, because they got beat 1-0 by Newcastle. Mm. And Rashford's performance has been absolutely slated by pretty much everyone. Yeah, Ten Hag, which, again, you did say months ago, uh, you think his treatment of Sancho has kind of made them lose the dressing room. Mm. Them rumblings are kind of coming back again. A lot of the players are reportedly thinking that he's been a bit too harsh on them and stuff. Mm. And, they're just having an absolute nightmare, aren't they? Yeah, and now he's turned on. But I say, you know, Rashford's probably going under that bus now, isn't he? I'd mm-hmm. imagine. Um, his performance has been poor, though, and I think, you know... As you're speaking, I'm just going to try and find... A lot, of, pe- a lot of people have got a, you know... I've got sympathy with, with Ten Hag, and, and obviously, you know, the fact that United have had some top managers, some average managers in there the last few seasons. No one's really got a proper tune out of the players. No one's got United back to close to where they were. If anything, the worst manager out of all them, all they're going to Solskjaer, come closest. Mm-hmm. And that was just literally from what you'd probably say, just being matey with the players and probably just treating them with a bit more like, yeah. you know, um, I wouldn't say respect, but undue respect. But he, he was probably just a bit nicer to them and tried to man-manage them a bit more. Ten Hag is, is saying it in the main as he as as he sees it. Um, I, I think he's actually putting more into this job than some of the other managers have in the past. And that's probably what's upsetting him and annoying him more than anything else. I think the worst thing about Rashford's performance at the weekend, though, and the one thing that he's getting just full, you know, uh, justified criticism for is the is the lack of work rate. He just mm. didn't look arsed. And for a for a homegrown Man United, you know, player, Man United supporter, proper Mancuni, you know, mm. he's, he's all about the club. That was unacceptable. And, and, and you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be... If it, regardless of whether I was in a United fan in Camp Ten Hag or Camp, you know, the players, I, w- I wouldn't be defending that for it. Well, how can you defend this, right? Apart from when he scored a goal against Evan on the 26th of November. Which is a penalty that they give him just to go, go on, Marcus, get a goal. Had. When do you think was the last goal he scored? September. 3rd of September against mm-hmm. the Arsenal. I think I heard that to be fair. Before that, gym. 5th of August. So he scored three goals this season. Uh, one of which is a penalty that he was gifted. Sorry, actually, he... only two, and one was it. Probably scored one for England, doesn't he? Maybe? He, scored, he scored one for England. Mm. His last four goals have been against Lens in the, um, I'm guessing, you know what, that was a friendly, was it? Yeah, it was a friendly. Oh, my God. Friendly. He scored one against Arsenal. He scored one for England against Italy and against Everton. That's a... That's dreadful. I that's mean. an awful season, isn't it? And he, he must have played most games. Don't yeah. remember him having, you know, significant injuries. He's played most games. But look, it, it, look, one thing you can't defend, I guess, on ten, ten Hag side is how poor his record has been against top half teams. Have you seen yeah. it? They haven't won a game, I think, in like 20 odds or something now. Well, they've lost the last three against Newcastle. And I always think Newcastle have been a team that, you know... Not even lost the, the convince, even that 1-0, that, that flattered them. It, it well, should have been about 4 or 5 nil. The stats they expected, the uh, XG is 2.98 mm-hmm. for Newcastle. It's basically 3, yeah. 0.38 for United, not even half a goal. Yeah, it's it's a 3 nil, isn't it, at least? Yeah. it's um, It was shocking, I think, you know, they're watching them going forward. Listen, I don't mind Newcastle. I don't think they're as good as maybe they're getting made out to be in some mm-hmm. part of the media. They've got a lot of injuries. Mm-hmm. They got a lot of you know a lot of decent players, but I think but they they them players are giving their all, aren't they? And yeah. you can see with them players and going back to the point you made on Ten Hag, you can see with the players they believe in the manager, they believe in what the manager's asking them to do. Everyone you know, young players come in. That Miley is it? What his name is coming in the field, mm-hmm. eighteen years of 18, age, and he, yeah. he just fits right in. Yeah, like Miley, it, yeah. Like, like, you know, he fits right in. The other players, seventeen, he is. Yeah, seventeen, ridiculous, but you know. 
conversely, compared to Ten Hag, Eddie Howe's getting every last ounce out of those group yeah. of players. I just don't know where United go for me because I mean, when when they're still starting Martial, I mm. mean, I think he his debut he scored against Liverpool, didn't he? I mm. think that's from the he always scores against us. Always scores against us. It's they got Chelsea obviously midweek and then Bournemouth at the weekend, and then they've got the the Champions League game against Bayern Munich where they'll probably end up not even making the Europa League. Mm. Then it's Liverpool. It's four massive games there. You know, Chelsea's going to be tough. Bournemouth are going to be expected playing to well. beat. Bournemouth playing Bayern well. and then Liverpool. It's Bournemouth away as well as Bournemouth at home. Bournemouth at home. We've got two home games at the weekend. Yeah. So Chelsea, um, obviously Wednesday, I think it might be. I think they got to win both them games mm. because I think if they lose against either of them, you know, if you lose against Chelsea, it's like you aren't even good enough to, to to be anywhere near that top six. You know, you've lost against another team that's in or you know they're I think Chelsea not Chelsea eleventh or something aren't they tenth or eleventh? Um, if you lose against Bournemouth, if you lose either of those games, the, the pressures. Well, I was going to say to you then, so how long then does he stay in a job? But you think the next four games are Chelsea, Bournemouth at home, Bayern at home, Liverpool, West Ham away. That takes us up to Boxing Day, which is Aston Villa at home. I don't think... Listen, if I think if he stays in the job one way or the other for after those three games, I don't think there's any plans to get rid of him till at least the end of the season. Really? Because if you're going to get rid of him and you believe that this moment in time, we're not sure... You do it before that Champions League game, don't you? To give the chance of maybe a bounce and to stay in the Champions League. It's only next week, though, isn't it? I know it is, but that's what I mean. If you were going to sack them, you'd have sacked them after Newcastle, wouldn't you? Mm. If they're keeping them in now, they're not. They're not going to sack them after the Bournemouth game, are they? And before the. That's like I said. We said last week about Everton's, which will come on to Everton were great, but I think there's no. I think when your team is not playing great, and you just look at fixtures just on the base of them, there's there's no easy games. You know, you look oh. at. West Ham, West Ham away is a tough game. Aston Villa are flying at the minute. Going to Forest, you know, you should beat them. But like, the, as a United fan, you're not looking at any of those fixtures no. with any confidence, are you? No. I mean, they beat us last week 3 0, but I, 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 I don't, I'm not a big fan of the whole XG thing. But I'm, again, I think the XG in that game was, was in our favour. was in our favour. But like I say, we, we spoke about that game and I spoke to um, a few blue mates and, and you said you know, that, that game could have been 3 0 to Everton. Yeah, we, we, we put... ripped it off. Most Everton fans did. And that shows where United are, really. We were like, you know what? On another day, because it beat them, hmm. we moved on to the next game. That should have been a platform for them, but it wasn't. It was another, again, another gam- damn squib on it. Like, okay, well. Mm. They are look. They are going from game to game at the moment, and you don't just don't see even in the game against us. You can't see any obvious pattern of play. No. You can't see. There doesn't doesn't look anyone on the pitch who looks outstanding. Garnacho is having a decent purple patch. Obviously, you know, the world against us scores in the Champions League, but mm. it's. Yeah. I think the whole sack and set hard. It's like when do you do it though? I the know. games come that thick and fast in December. I don't think it'd make any real point, would it? No, no. You get a caretaker in, but. If the players like Rashford again are, are, are acting the way they are, then I don't think it makes that much of a difference. And and the other thing is, and you always say this when you're about to dismiss a manager, who's available? There's not, mm. there's not the market's not. I just know. think United, even so long after Alex Ferguson, I just still think most people in football look at that like a poison chalice, mm-hmm. because in fans' minds, Man United are like the greatest team ever. Fucking not. No. It's like Liverpool it's in the seventies. It's, it's well gone. gone now, yeah. Well gone. Um, you know that Arsenal who people keep on picking me up. I'm sorry, right? Maybe this is my fault. It does sound a bit disrespectful, but I just don't think of Arsenal as being top of the league. I know mm. they technically are top of the league now, but in my mind, they're not. It's Man City. Like I, I know well, that sounds stupid. I know before the Christmas show, we are going to look back at you know our predictions to the Premier League. I, I did believe that. Arsenal would stay in theirs. I think they'd win the league, but I think I predict them to finish second and used to finish theirs. And I still think, I know you're going to disagree with that, I still think that'll happen. I just don't know why I don't see it. I don't know. I think well, they're winning Arsenal, games. It's Arsenal. the simple. They're, they're winning games. I just don't, I don't know whether it's a thing. They're winning but... games and they're not losing. Many are they? So they're picking points up. No, they are, Even yeah. when they're not playing well. I think they're starting to spread the goals around a bit more. I think that big win in, in the week against Lions in the Champions League where six different scorers or five different scorers have, have mm. got there. I think, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say they got an edge, but I think the commonality between all three of the teams up there, City, Hughes and Arsenal, more so than other seasons, is the spreading the goals around. Mm. Haaland's oh, yeah. obviously still scored 14, but he's not scored 20 like he did this time last season. Yeah. Different players are getting on the score sheet. 
and I think that's the that's almost the denominator of a of a top top size is you, is you, you get different players who will chip in. I think what's gonna be pivotal, as I said last week, is how quickly they can get Kevin De Bruyne back fit again. Yeah, because Trent oh, yeah. is starting to look like like I said to you last week. Yeah, he's he's the De Bruyne now. You know, yeah. out of those three, he's the the player. He looks. I think just on Arsenal for a second before we go to City, though, I think the Arsenal thing for me, maybe this is a personal thing for me, why I just don't really see them as a massive threat. That might bite me on the arse, but as we sit here now in December, I don't think they will win the league or even come second. Is I remember being this time, what, last year, or not this time last year, it was maybe, it was in March time, and Arsenal had to go to Anfield, and if they'd won, they would have been clear. Mm. And I said, there's not a chance Arsenal are winning. I think they went 2-0 up, mm. they got pegged back to 2-2. And then after that, then they lost the next... Well, they never won the next three games. Man City win the league. Only thing I'll say about I, that... I just think Arsenal is that. I the, think only, that. the only thing I'll say about that, that's a hell of a lot better than they've ever done at Anfield. Like, yeah. when was the last time they went 2-0 at Anfield? Probably that our Shavin game where they finished 4-4. I mean, it wasn't 2-0, but mm. they got a couple of goals early on then. Yeah, so, I just... I, I just... I, I think... I think Arsenal five years ago would have got beat 4-0 at Anfield last season. Mm. But I just I just see them a little bit like bot- bottlers, I do. And until, because of last season, that is, and for that reason, and the fact that I think Liverpool are flying at the minute, I think City have dropped off a level. I just, yeah, that's all. By the way, I don't think they win the league. I don't think they win the league. But I do think they'll be there or thereabouts, I heard. Like, well, let's move on to City then, because well, you, think, you think they will. Mm. They drew 3-3 against yeah. Spurs. Unlucky I, at the end. I, I just think, regardless of the end, we'll talk about that in a second. I think it was a little bit too easy for them at times. It might sound a bit stupid that because they got the you know they were one 0 behind, they got pegged back you know a couple of times. At two one, I was watching that game thinking they need to put the foot down here, and they didn't. They kind of thought let's just pass the game out. Tottenham are missing some players. They've been showing high energy the whole game. They're gonna start. I almost think that was the message from Pep. Look, let's not try and like go mad here and get hit on the break. Let's just try and control the game. And that was a mistake. I think they should have went for the throat and killed them off. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, obviously, it's easy with the benefit of hindsight. I think that was a game that they should and should and could have comfortably seen off. And again, that at the end, they've obviously been denied at that. What probably would have been a goal, use of scored two very very good goals, four very very good goals. Yeah. And we'll talk about using it in, in a minute. Um, I just think that's one of them. Pendulum swung a bit. Uh, I wouldn't say the pendulum swung. I think it. Yeah, I think it's just one of them weekends where I think they'll they'll look back at it probably in six months and go, yeah, you know that yeah. that would have been a chance to give us a bit more breathing space. But I don't think he'll do that many times this season. Well, listen for me as a red, what gives me a lot of hope and a lot of excitement is you look at Man City's four games here where they're playing against the big boys. They get beat by Arsenal. They draw four four with Chelsea. They draw one one with Liverpool. They draw three three with Tottenham. They're the big rivals and they're not beating any of them. Mm. That, to me, is giving me so much hope that they're missing Kevin De Bruyne. Something's not quite ticking. They've got Doku coming through. They've got Haaland. You've got these great players. But, like you've just said then, they're not being able to put teams away. Mm. And I, I just think, you know, there's your four big rivals there. You've not beaten any of them. It's got to give us coming up. Who have they got coming up, fixture-wise? They've got Aston Villa midweek. Tough. It's going to be tough for them. I think Villa need to bounce back as well after the weekends. Are they at home? Uh, no, they're away to Villa. They're at the weekends. Game, they're away to Luton. Listen, Luton, you'd expect them to win, but you know, you see what he's done to Liverpool. So you no, never listen, know. I, 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 I'm not sitting here now, and, and I said it last week, and they just about <laughs> Liverpool just about win it. City will absolutely of course to will. Luton. Of course they will. Uh, but, uh, but I think that Villa game is a Villa really interesting tough. one. Yeah. Uh, I, I think, look, again, I hate to blow me on some, but I did say Villa to do well this season. And you did, yeah. Uh, I still think they're a couple of injuries away from falling off a little bit. However, that's a huge test, I think. More so because you and I Emery has got a he's got a good um he's got good pedigree in Europe and City are a bit more like a European team than they are a Premier League team. Mm-hmm. I think you and I Emery will relish coming up against City at home, thinking, Go on, go and break us down, we'll hit you on the break, got loads of pace on the break. Mm. Got players like, you know, Diaby and, and Watkins and I who just love playing off the shoulder. City play that high line. It could be another barnstorm, like two, two, three, yeah. three or whatever. But one player, mate, who's been getting the headlines before we move on to Liverpool. Uh, he plays Man City. He's twenty eight. His name's Jack Grealish. Soonest come out yesterday, uh, Monday, and said um 
basically, I think the line, the, the Twitter headline that, that roped me in was um, Jack Grealish's, Graham Souness's new Paul Pogba. And it's just, you know, we kind of, you know, the way you used to just always go after Pogba. Mm. He seems to have switched fire to Grealish now. And I'll be honest, I'm a little bit with Souness on this one. I never believed he was worth 100 million. And maybe he's not worth 100 million. He's what Aston Villa wanted and says he was prepared to pay it. That doesn't necessarily mean he's a 100 million pound player. I get that. But I think I looked at his stats this morning before we started recording. I think he averages one in seven. Right. Goals. Yeah, one in seven goals. For me personally, as an attacking midfielder, that's worth a hundred million pounds playing in mm-hmm. arguably the greatest team ever assembled. Mm-hmm. That's that's nowhere near good enough. I don't think. No, no, I don't disagree. Graham soon is just talking about, you know, he doesn't he, he dribbles too much, he doesn't get the ball out quick enough, he's not looking for that killer pass enough. All things which again I really agree with. And if you look at his stats, they all backed it up. Okay, he scored at the weekend. The last time he scored before then, I know he's had a few injuries last season. So he's got one goal this still season. Still plays a lot of games, doesn't he? He's still played the best part of what, 12? Has he played 12 games this season? He's played this season. To be fair, he's only played eight games this season okay. in, in the... Um, in eight the, games and, and what's that one? In the league, nine. One goal and one assist. 13. He's played 13 times. 13 times? Uh, it's not bad. 13 times he's played and he scored one goal and that was at the weekend. One of you have 15 league games? Yeah. All right, including the Champions League and stuff, maybe he's, he's, there's a maximum of 22 games you could have played, but he played 13 games. Yeah. And what's that one assist and one goal? His assist, he's got one assist, two assists he's got. Yeah. I mean, Evertonians are, are, are being quite critical of Jack Harrison. He's got one goal and four assists in eight games <laughs> in the league. Do you know what I mean? And Which is mad. There's levels, there's levels, isn't there? And, and as you're getting at, 100 million or not, if you're a regular in Man City's midfield in that attacking third, you should be because of the on the basis of the fact you've got a the most prolific goal scorer we've seen yeah. in twenty years. Should be getting more assists. You should be get, yeah, it should be food and drink that. Man City's one of those teams where me with one leg, you look at some of those performances and you go, I I could have scored that. Like, yeah, I yeah, I yeah. could have got myself in that position. Mm-hmm. They make it so easy. They pull defenders away. They give you that much space. Mm-hmm. They put the ball on a plate for you. you mm-hmm. I could have finished some of them. And the fact that Grealish is only getting one goal and one assist in 13 games, I don't think is good enough. No, no, I agree. So I think I am team Graham Souness for this. Let's one. let's see because he, you know, he's got a goal the weekend. Should have got, could have got two goals mm-hmm. if, you, if you, you know, include that. What what did you make of that? It's harsh, wasn't it? I'd be fuming if it was. Liberal. I can't even say it's harsh. You know, I mean, this word's been thrown around a lot. I won't, I won't say corruption, but that is a mad, mad. He does that. You play. The ref says play on. So the ref sees it, yeah. sees that as an opportunity. How, I mean, I've heard people, I've heard a few people say, look, if he lets it run on another second, he probably doesn't blow his whistle. But I don't know whether at first sight he thinks Grealish is offside or he thinks that Grealish hasn't quite got the run on the defender. But you wait for the linesman, don't I know. It, 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 was, it was a strange one. I think it's really which weird. Which made me really happy. Uh, yeah, I can imagine it did, yeah. And I, I didn't, yeah, I didn't really know what to make of it, but yeah, it's just it, it, it would be in fear. It does seem dodgy. I'm glad you said it. Really dodgy, that. I, you know I heard someone say the other day, right, and, and I think it's it's an interesting one. We've just, just had that episode talking about Squid Game, and I, I chirped in a few times to say, well, look, it's got to be entertaining, blah, blah, blah. You can't not, su- you know, subscribe, and you said it yourself, so that, to the fact that the referees are playing a part in the biggest theatre in world football, mm. in world sports. They've yeah. got to play the part, haven't yeah, they? Yeah. And I, I, I like it's no fun for anyone for City to run away with the league. It's no fun for every three teams being it's up there big, all competing. Big conspiracy, though, isn't it? Well, uh, you, you're the you're, you're the biggest <laughs> subscriber to that. No, but, I do, I do, I do think that some of the decisions that the refs have had over the years for Man City, we've had a couple against us. You know, you one against Everton. Mm. It just got me thinking. Is he is he going? Ah, do you, do you get enough here. Oh fuck it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm yeah. Away. They they they've got enough rubber the green. I know whether you're right. Whether it whether it's his personal. No, sometimes preference. you're in the back of your head. Yeah, you're yeah. Like it's like when a referee goes, oh, I should have given a pen there and I didn't. Mm-hmm. Next year, and then Human, it's, it's a really soft pen. And you want to give that? Yeah, yeah. I Human. don't know whether it's a little bit making it up. Yeah, for maybe possibly, past things, possibly because it was fucking. <laughs> It was it was, it was an absolute bizarre decision. I wouldn't even say it's shocking, like, oh, that's poor from you. 
I, there was something very deliberate about it. But then going, going back on itself, Harlan goes up to him at the end and according to every rule in the book, you know, he should be booked or yeah. he should be reprimanded. He gets away with it. That's what I mean. That, that part of me thinks the referees thought, I can't even, I can't even reprimand him or the FA because we can't because yeah, we know that was we, so, yeah. so bad. Which is wrong though because the FA, yeah, the yeah. FA shouldn't be saying we're not going to throw the book at Harlan because uh-huh. we got it wrong initially. Harlan so, still should be getting done. There was something going around on WhatsApp today. Did you see that? Well, like, it describes like what Harlan said to the referee. The FA have come out and said this is this is not on. We need to do something about it. Yeah. Evan got docked five points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's like when Ryan Babble come out went on that um, social media about yeah, yeah, yeah. a Man United shirt. He got mm. fucking fined thirty grand or something. Mm. Harlan's come out and said, "What the fuck?" Yeah. Ben Funny if, he, if uh, Harlan come out this weekend with a skinhead. <laughs> He's brilliant. <laughs> and he just went, yeah, we didn't find him. We just made, we just said to him, we're going to have to shave your head. Oh, God, <laughs> imagine that. Um, brings on to the Mighty Reds, that pendulum. But I'm going to say, you kind of alluded to it. I'm going to say it. It was a swing. Jack Grealish getting fucked over and Liverpool having one of those type of games that seems to happen around field quite a lot, to be honest. Um, just football magic. You know, I wasn't actually at the game. I was out and I was coming off my phone. Couldn't quite believe it when it went one one. We sat I could, yeah, yeah. I go and you know I can see Liverpool doing you know three four five nearly. And even when it went two one, I thought that'll be three one four yeah. one five one. And it goes back and then it goes two two. Oh, what the fuck's going on here? Three two to Fulham. I'm like, are you? What mm-hmm. the fuck is going on here? I'm texting a couple of lads. What's going on here? And then before you know it, I think it, it comes up on the eighty seventh, eighty eighth. You know, no, you know what? As well, I was watching it. And when he made that change, I was like, what are you doing here? Mm. Bringing it, is it Enzo for McAllister or Enzo, Enzo for Gravenberch? Yeah. What a finish. And then like, yeah. By the way, I think there was a lot of reds in the, in the ground that was saying, why are you bringing him on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This now. But I mean, Great what a finish, finish yeah. Great finish. For, for a so-called, you know, defensive midfielder. Lovely strike of the ball. Though. He's got nice, I mean, he's Japanese, isn't he? He's Japanese. Yeah. They've just got really good technique, haven't they, Japanese? Like, they... they they just strike a but not they never smash it. Hmm. They just guide the ball so well, don't they? And they're so like precise in the way they play. Yeah. But you know, great substitution and then what a goal that was. That was like it was Well, they just seemed to be unbe- un- I was gonna say Gerard would have been proud of it. Mm. Um you had Trent's goal, which down here for some reason on flash goals as a Leno own goal. Oh, the free kick was. Was it? Yeah, he hits the free kick and um it hits the bar and it's like coming back into play if the back of his head and goes in. Really? I mean Trent though, what a yeah, no, those boots, mate. Don't know what he's doing. He's got what two in or three. You know what though? Or... You can all remember, and this is there's levels, obviously. But you remember when you were kids and you wore boots like that, and they wear the exact boots that yeah, used yeah. to have the preds. They just used to feel different to yeah. where you hit them. The way oh, the laces yeah. were covered in the sorry the tongue covered in the laces. You'd strike it in that sweet spot and just always feel like you yeah. just got an extra. Seeing them in Birmingham, like wearing them, it's a proper throwback. Yeah, I think a lot it. of us of a certain age. Um, yeah, it sends free kick, then it obviously goes back to 1-1. And McAllister, what another absolute worldy. Oh, I seen an interview afterwards, he said, you know, when it was bouncing up, I knew straight away, and the second I hit it, I knew it was mm-hmm. going in. I always love it when a player says that. But then again, they get pegged back to 2-2. Well, I mean, we've mentioned it on other games. What was the XG there? Because I was saying to my mates, I thought Fulham had the better chances. You know, you had a lot of shots. Ours was 2.5, and theirs was 1.2. Okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, we had 26 mm-hmm. shots compared to their nine. 12 of ours were on target, five of theirs. Yeah, so I mean, it, yeah. Better to the play. had a lot of shots. Stats, yeah. they, they they did create some really good chances. I actually thought Awobi played really well. I know you said you didn't watch it, but again, a lot of my mates agree. But I thought Awobi was good for them. Mm-hmm. Um, surprised, as you said, I'm surprised that they'd done so well in Anfield. But uh, as you say, and as the the big headline was, you was coming back so late and, and four brilliant goals. I also think as well, when you talk about this pendulum swinging, and almost, I'm not talking about the pendulum swinging. I'm talking about it. I don't think it defends on swing it. But, but you know, sometimes though, I think in football, it's not so much, it's not only when things happen, it's the timing of them. Mm. And Liverpool, not to bring up Everton and Pickford, but like in December, things have happened that, you know, it just happened. Mm. And you're like, fucking hell, how's that happened there? Don't know how, but I'm taking it. And it just gives you that bit of momentum. Mm. You just don't know whether that could be one of those games because what what starts out... Is it Ar- is it Arsenal, Hughes and City now? Is City third? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we're a point ahead of Arsenal now. Sorry, point ahead of Man City. And you're a point behind Arsenal. And two points behind mm-hmm. Arsenal. And I just think, you know, a game where you're going into Fulham thinking we should batter these, and before, you know, you, you know, you're know, 3-2 down in the 85th minute, 
Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, wow. The only thing I'll I'll temper that with, and I've tempted a few times now, by the way, I'm playing down a little bit, is uh, Kelleher. It's not good him, you know. Well, no, I... Not good him. No, I disagree. I think he is. I don't think he had as great as game no, for I, us. I, I but, don't think he's good him, mate. I'm uh, sorry. Well, he's not as good as Alisson, no. But no, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't think he's good. I I think he's, he's had some good games in the cup, and he, or whatever. He had that cup final. I think he saves a couple of penalties or whatever. Maybe he's had a. Re- I, I've seen him. I've seen him a few times, and a lot of the times, he hasn't made mistakes because certain, you know, the opposition have bailed him out with a poor bit of finishing. Defenders have bailed him out. I, I don't think he's a good keeper. Then I, I think how long is he? He's out for, has he got another couple of games, isn't he? Well, for so United now. We've got Sheffield United midweek, which I'm actually going to. Looking forward I, to that. I, I, think, I don't think that'll be a problem for Keller, even him. And then we've got Palace away at the weekend before we go away to Royal Union. SG and then the big one is United on the yeah, I think he's apparently he'll be back for the United game which is where you need him to be fair yeah so you'll I mean, probably get can, to the next two yeah if we can get especially the two in the league I mean I don't think it matters much in the Europa mm-hmm. League does it the next couple of weeks but I think we're already through are we done? he's out already yeah. through so doesn't really matter on that but yeah if we can hopefully get get six points over the next two Prem games I mean that's what that's kind of a need is Chef United the points is anyone yet no like this wild is like one to ten to be the next manager and the other one hasn't even been sacked yet. Oh yes. Yes, he has. Yes, he got has, sacked yesterday. Uh, he, yeah, got sacked yesterday, yeah. Yeah, do you reckon Chris Wilder? I mean, again, we're recording this after the game will have already been played, but I'd be astounded yeah. if Yeah, Chef United owner, Prince Abdullah confirms Wilder appointment. Yeah. Made it it's it doesn't matter. I, I hate not, that. Not, there's nothing worse, is there, than a new that. manager coming in before you play them. Can I and just Wilder say Wilder will have them up for it. Can I just say Wilder I animals. think that's I think that saved your season, you know. Your appointment last season, because you've got him in. You, Deitch. you just played Arsenal when Arsenal were flying. Yeah, we beat them one 0 Yeah, and the first game Deitch had was mm-hmm. that, and I think that stopped Arsenal in the tracks there. Yeah, yeah. You just said that Arsenal bottled it. Well, they did on, <laughs> on Merseyside. That, yeah, <laughs> against Everton and Liverpool. But yeah. I, do, I do think that mm-hmm. was that was massive. I mean, look, it's it's it's, it's a bit of a uh, loyalties are split there because I'd I'd love to see Wilder going. Go and beat you, but then of course like, would. I probably wouldn't, given they'll more than likely go above us if they do. Yeah, but well, we'll move on to it now. So finishing off on the pool, yeah, I think buzzing that you know, obviously we obviously come back. Um, Another one, mate. Sorry, sorry, on Liverpool, Nunes. Oh my God, no, nah, I think he'll come by the time we sit here next week. I think he will have he'll have a couple of goals by this time next week. Mate, again, it, yeah, talk about. You know, um, Kelleher being bailed out in previous games, he got bailed out by them four worlds. He says, he hit the, the, one bar, where, didn't he? the one where, but yeah, the one where Salah nods it down to him and just like slides in, he just like, he would just frustrate the life out of me. If I, I, I agree, like, I agree, but I also think Liverpool at the moment, they've got everyone, you know, Trent's, um, Trent's popping up with a couple of goals. Gosh, if you've got the defensive midfield at end, though, Diaz before, before, Diaz. before the weekend got a few, didn't he? You know, Jota before he got injured was Gakpo's now um, scoring. I think if they can just keep on doing that while Nunes keeps on simmering his emotions, keeps on simmering away. I think they will get a point where he he will. I think he will come good. Otherwise, yeah. like I've said, I'll, I'll caveat that. Way. Otherwise, if he doesn't, I think he risks becoming a bit of a laughing stock mm. if he's not already to some other clubs. Mm. Um, but I've still got confidence in him. I, I still, I Fair think, I still. I think he brings a bit to the team. Fair enough. Um, let's move on to use that because I didn't give you a, a hope in hell, to be honest. I thought I'd draw. I said to you, that was a strange, like, how I'm, I'm defiant you were about Forrest beating us. Uh, I did think we could go there and get at least the draw. And to be honest, it was convincing a 1 0 mm. in terms of like. I mean, you've never had. It was no, pretty, pretty even on the XG yeah, and you were was, less they, present as possession. It was, but they didn't, they didn't do much at all. Mm-hmm. They really didn't. Um, we we I I felt fairly comfortable, and I, I, maybe that's a reflection of how good we are away from home now, um, of why I felt so comfortable. But once we went in front, I didn't think. I mean, I think we're fourth in the away table. Can I can I just say what you know? What's the most Everton thing ever is in the form table? Right, you come in sixth. You've got ten points from your last five games. But in, we're only on in the league. You only got seven. <laughs> It's never happened, has it? We're just breaking records oh, at all. Oh, wow. God, you know what's Yeah, we've got 13 points away from Lad, home. You, you, we've only got seven. <laughs> you, should, you should be 12th in the league, you know? I know. 
We're just behind Chelsea, yeah? Wow. It's not. Right. I still think they'll get four points back. Do I, still think, I still think on, on appeal they'll give us four. Well, that'll take it up to 17th. Mm. <laughs> Great. But um, listen, a massive three points, that though. Massive. Because again, Burnley, if we're at the weekend, mm. um, the results, I think, when you've won, haven't always gone well around you. But no, no. I think the fact that you're winning, anyways, at least something. And yeah, I was pleasantly surprised. You got Newcastle next, then Chelsea. Two two tough games. I mean, I mean, I just hope Newcastle have got to run out of steam at some point to play PSG and Man United. Two really, you know, really exhausting physically, you know, games for them. Um, I don't Pop, know. Uh, they are riding away. Don't get me wrong. Got a lot of injuries. Pope's injured now as well. Yeah. Dislocated shoulder. I just like to think we can we can put that bit of pressure on them. You know, on their on their back four, which is a bit makeshift for the weekend. Massive game, obviously for Andy Gordon. Andy Gordon's flying. You'll be looking forward to coming back the weekend. He's kissing the badge when he scores. I've seen that. You know what? I'm not. I'm okay. I'm okay with it in the sense that like he's not. Qu- he's not kissing the Man United badge. He's not kissing the Liverpool badge. The lad's happy where he is. Mm-hmm. Didn't have a good time at Evan. He was getting a lot of stick from the fans towards the end because he weren't putting the performances in. He wasn't the the talisman that we needed. It was a good move for him. We needed the money. And there's got to be Evertonians, scousers looking at him going, you know what? He's playing Champions League footy. It is me, fair play to him. I, I was like I was like that with Rooney. It was like, you know, it's not nice when he goes and whatever, but look at him going, he you know, he's he's a footballer. He's he's mm. he's there to play footy and he's there to, to fulfil his potential as anyone would want to do as a footballer. Yeah. And he's you no, know, he's living his dreams and he, he's doing well, so fair play to him. Just hope he Hope he Come rolls. Night, hope he yeah. rolls his ankle on Thursday <laughs> after two minutes and goes off. I think the other good thing for Everton is uh, Luton. I've got Arsenal and Man City next, so you'd mm. expect them not to get. Everton. Definitely nice. They've got Hughes. Burnley have got Wolves and Brighton. Mm. Mm, interesting for them. Yeah. I, I honestly think that that win against Sheffield United is going to be the dawn of all false dawns. I think they'll. I think they'll lose the next two games, Burnley. Really? Yeah. yeah I, I think. Don't get me wrong. I think I think they've probably been due a bit of a few goals at home. I think they have missed a lot of chances at home. However, I still think they're not. I still don't think they're good enough for this league. And mm-hmm. I think they, they'll probably come crashing down to earth against Wolves. Bournemouth as well. who have been doing all right. You know they uh, won the last two and drawn this weekend. They got uh, sorry midweek. They got Palace and the weekend. They got United. Again, I think they'd be okay, Bournemouth. I mean, I mean, I'm worried a bit. More. I was worried a bit more this time last week because you know Fulham starts to pick points up. Obviously, even though they didn't pick points up at the weekend, they, they unfortunately played well against Hughes. They were the team I was hoping would get sucked in. Palace are starting to wobble a little bit. Um, I think Bournemouth look as good as anyone's on there at the moment, performance yeah, wise. I, I think that what we said for a while, I just think it's down to Luton, Burnley, and Sheffield United. I mm-hmm. just think it absolutely nailed on for the three of them to mm-hmm. go straight back down. Um, and I'd be insisting next weekend when Nunes has scored six against Sheffield United and. Um, Last one, last one on us, which is which is a concern, is obviously Dominic Calvert Lewin on the treatment table again. Is he? Don't I think he's. Don't that. think he's. Um, apparently not out for long. It was just he was carrying a bit of a knock. However, it's still a concern. Um, Beto was on okay at the weekend, but he he now a bit like Nunes, but on a lower level, he's desperate for a goal at the moment. You can just smell his desperation every time he's he's just lashing things. Well, it, he's lashing at things, and yeah, I, I think we need we need Calvert Lewin back in there. Sooner rather than later. Um, just a mad one as well. Just popped into my head. Then, did you see uh, Mike Owens interview with Simon Jordan this week? No. Podcast that he done. Well, I haven't heard this week from. It was. Um, you know what's baffling for me? Mike Owen always. Um, sorry, Mike Owen almost. It doesn't sound like he's doing anything wrong in the way he's talking. But I'm thinking, are you hearing yourself here? And the story he's talking about is when he's basically gone to Real Madrid for a year. You know. He didn't think he was a flop, but he, he went there for one year, didn't win fuck all, mm-hmm. and then got sold to Newcastle. He, so he's going to Newcastle. I think he plays six months and gets injured. Soon as he loses his job, I think. Um, and then he's just basically comes back and then he's injured for the whole season. Blah, blah, blah. But he's got in his contract he can leave and to go to Liverpool. Mm. So... He ends up having a bit of a fallout with Shearer because Shearer's saying, you know, come on, I want you to play. And he's like, I don't think I've... And there's this whole kind of feeling of, is his, is his heart in it? Yeah, yeah. Is he there for the right reason? Shearer's saying he's not, he's just picking up a pace. Simon Jordan putting that on his toes. Yeah. Saying. But Mike Lowell, 
again, go and watch it if you haven't. But Michael Owen's like, no, I don't agree with Shearer. I, I don't ever, and I could. And he's saying, you know, like, I can feel me. I'm saying, if I start sprinting, it's going to go. And Shearer's going, well, you, you got to actually try then. And he's like, well, I can, but, you know, I know me body. And yeah, yeah. it's like, oh, no, but are you, got, are you going to then? And he's like, oh, well, I, why, I won't start, but I'll just come over the last 10 minutes if that's all right. So they're having this kind of debate. So Michael Owen in his head is going, I was there. Do you know what I mean? I was offering, mm-hmm. you know. But at the same time, he's going, every season I wanted Liverpool to come in for me. So it was written in my contract and mm. and I knew Ferguson was going to come in for me at the end so that's why I didn't and I'm just thinking how can you on one hand go I was ready to give everything and I don't agree with Alan Shearer but on the other hand go I desperately wanted to go to Liverpool I had every season hoping to go back to Liverpool and it was a fascinating watch just to think like how he's the level the level of um, I can't stand Michael Owen the, the level of arrogance oh, yeah he, he does come a bit yeah innate just... arrogance he's got like it's it's not an arrogance like an outwardly and really come. It's just an arsey arrogance, I think. Yeah. And like an undertone of arrogance, like you're saying there, I knew Liverpool were coming in for me. I knew Ferguson was coming in for me. Not realising that his behaviour was manifested by that in the back of his mind, do you know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. acknowledging it. Yeah. Even 20 years later, whatever it was, saying, you know what, looking back, maybe subconsciously I was thinking, if my hamstring does go, that's not going to happen, that's going to happen. But he doesn't address that though. Yeah, I know. Well, it's, that's it's just really interesting. Me. Really interesting to see. And, if I'm just a, as a pure neutral watching that, I'd be I'd be team Alan Shearer. Yeah, yeah. Because you're yeah. thinking, hang on a minute, you fucking he's asking you to play, but you won't. But you've sat there for three years getting your money, thinking, I hope Liverpool come in for me any minute. Yeah, he's horrible, Michael. Owen, you know, I'm, I've got no time for Michael Owen. Or... No, I'm not. I'm not as big as fan to be honest. Um, I will probably watch that. I'll listen to it. You know, because I can imagine she, Simon Joe not letting him off with that. Yeah, no, it, it is. It's interesting. Um, the one thing I did see, mate, just quickly before we just touch on the boxing, is Nadal looks like he might be back and making a return in Brisbane in January. And the other thing which I thought was interesting in the world of tennis was Nick Kyrgios has uh, thanked Andy Murray for attempting to help him after spotting signs of self harm self harm during practice, which I thought was massive because the whole thing by um, this was this was um, so he says. Kyrgios has regularly spoken in recent years about his struggles, including suicidal thoughts and spending time in London in a London psychiatric hospital after being knocked out of a mud in 2029. However, the Australian has never previously talked about the support that the three-time Grand Slam champion Murray attempted to provide. And he goes on and just says he kind of, you know, he's always been a big supporter as he came on the tour, etc., blah, blah, blah. And I just think it's just nice to know that no matter what levels of friendship you've got or rivals, you know, if you can see someone struggling, no, it's class that, just yeah. try and be a nice person. Well, there you go. I can't imagine Michael Owen ever thinking I was anyone else but himself <laughs> on the pitch. <laughs> You know, Andy Murray and the measure of the type of person he is and, and a lot of professionals are like ultimately you're a person more than you are yeah, you know, a professional. And in that case, going back to Shearer, the person, and you should have said, you know what, I'm here. I've had this three year contract, I've been paid, you know, through the nose. The Newcastle fans are as passionate as anyone, these don't deserve to go down. If my hamstring goes trying to keep them up, then that's just part of the service. That's yeah. what I've got to do. Mm. But um no, it's nice to hear that. No, it's good then because I just think as well. Like you just say it's it's people first, isn't it? And I think you've saw someone struggling, whether he's your mate or a competitor, mm. and you and you've reached out and tried to show support. I think that's amazing. Bit of a message to everyone, just to be yeah. a bit nicer to everyone. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, go on, and maybe we we'll finish on boxing. There's a bit going on this weekend. I mean, only briefly on the the um, what I think could be one of the fights of the year. Um, Regis Progress and um, Devin Haney, the super super lightweight. One and two going head to head. Pro Race has only ever been beat once. Haney's obviously got a flawless record. Um, not a huge puncher since he's you know since he's been reaching the top of the rank. So it's it's gonna it's almost certainly gonna go the distance. Fascinating fight. I mean, Haney should come through it. However, it could be, you know, could be it. You know, you've you've got Pro Race as a southpaw, so. It's always going to be that level of awkwardness fighting a southpaw. He's got the capability, I think, certainly to steal some rounds. It could mm. get really interesting, really tasty. Um, but definitely one that I'll I'll be wanting to stay up for. Mate, the one I the interesting story I saw this week, and I'm I'm massive fan of this, by the way. Amanda Serrano has relinquished her WBC world title after the government bodies refusing to let women fight 12 three minute rounds. Great. What a statement that is. Said that is, didn't I? When um, Tasha come out and said it, I think it's 
think it's massively unfair on the ones who are... I almost think, I don't disagree with the two-minute rounds for... It should be another level now. Mm. Like, like you know, Tasha's argument was we're fighting and training with men. Mm. We're doing three-minute, four-minute, five-minute sparring rounds. Why are we not being allowed to show our full athletic potential? Yeah. And, and to a certain extent, why are women getting off with only fighting two-minute rounds? Mm-hmm. And you can see the more athletic fighters like Serrano and like Tasha are getting two minutes in going, I'm much getting well, started yeah. here. And I think the whole, everyone wants to see women getting paid more. And I think that just totally goes against that argument. Yeah, and it's like tennis, isn't it? Like, you, yeah. you can, st- you know, they're only playing three sets. Why, why, should we, why, why do you deserve to go with the men are paying mm. when you're not fighting the same amount of minutes? Mm. So I think fair play must, you know, took a lot, big decision to relinquish yeah. that. And to, you know, but, but what a stand it's made, so... Yeah, I, I fully behind it, fully behind it. Uh, and likewise, look, I understand the reasons why I slightly flip it. I still believe that the goal should be smaller than footy for women. And that's a different argument. How many times oh, should... This how for? many times you see the... Like, how many six foot four, six foot five female goalies have you got? Not many, is there? How many times yeah, do you watch women's footy and the ball? Look at him, how, many, how, many ta- look, how many times do you see free kicks that just goes over the goalie's head and you're like, that's crap. Yeah, but they can still jump, though. I know they can still jump, but I, I just think <laughs> there's far too many goals. What about, like, uh, just, hey, the women's just getting lobbed. To hey, he was brilliant. He was only small for the keeper. No, but it's been acknowledged yeah, men, scientifically. Men bigger, stronger, powerful. Bigger, stronger, that. more powerful. There's there's arguments that women's game, the women's game at the time is too slow and too passive. The goalies aren't good enough. Or maybe smaller pitches, maybe. Fucking long, but yeah. Put pitches slow. I'm not, I'm not talking about the five-a-side goals, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> big Like that, big monsters. But I, I do believe, and this is not, again, it's not a, um, a dig on women's football or whatever, but I do think the standards would improve. I do think the quality of the games would be better. Especially. I do think there'd be less goals and more realistic goals because, again, there's too many goals mate, that I just see the goal, you just get to lobbed and like, that was too easy, that. Mm. And literally, you know, they're literally just lifting the ball and it's yeah. going in. Like what you used to do on Sunday League when Yeah, was exactly. Kid. Just think, yeah. yeah, when you were like 11, playing Jeffrey Humble and playing in like yeah. big, massive goals and it was, the same reason, wasn't it? They, they made... Well, Buckley Hill had every time we got a free kick, we had this lad, Brendan, when we were like... Nine just did it, Just did it, after, like, in the air, the cosy. Like, like yeah, it. just playing crossbar challenge, really. Yeah. He's lost in it uh, in the air, but... But going back to going back to that, I still, you know, I still think there may be certain levels of the game where the... Uh, or boxing that you'd have two-minute rounds, but I think there should be an opportunity for women mm. to showcase their skills. These big, massive, rounds. mega fights they need to, I think, now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and maybe it's when you get into the top ten. I don't know. What's the, it's not it's not changing it's not a different sport is it but I think it's like you go up level if you, if you want to fight for world titles you play it's three three minute rounds yeah, they do you know they do it in world title fights in you know in the in the male divisions where you know there's ten rounders there's five rounders or whatever but when you're fighting at world level you're fighting twelve rounds when you're fighting at world level in women's you should be fighting three minute rounds mate we'll have to make a decision next week because next week's sportscast might come via Las Vegas as um, could be recording out there we decide whether we can get in the studio or not just a bit of a heads up as I'm, I'm also engaged earlier in the week I, I can't say where I'm going because it's a surprise for the kids just in case that's, dramatically that's had a season on like some <laughs> social media channel but okay so heads up it might be on stream yeah, next week as Gary's got a surprise and I will be flying off to Vegas on Thursday to watch Paddy the Baddy wow it's also Liverpool, Man United. I'll be watching in Vegas. So Unbelievable. It's, at some Saturday, I've got lined up, um, but that's next week. We'll Again, we can, we can, you know, we can brief, briefly touch on it. Um, it's, been, it's been quiet, hasn't it, in both camps, relatively. Mm. And, it, and it does tend to get that way when it gets closer to the fight. Yeah. You know, yeah. where it's getting really serious, they're getting their head down, they're trying to keep things behind mm. closed doors. They're obviously starting to think about fight strategy, how yeah. one's going to defeat the other. I'm, uh, I'll be honest, I've listened to... I'm a massive fan of Paddy as a kind of friend, but then also, you know, want him to see him do well. But I don't know whether it's because of the whole military thing <laughs> and and your man Goggins, but I'm a little bit like, oh. Conflicted. Not conflicted, not you conflicted, think? Not I'm conflicted, nervous, yeah, yeah. just yeah, nervous yeah. for him, because you just, I've read Goggins' book, I know what a beast he is, and then you go and fuck, he's now training the guy who my mate's fighting. Mm. And I'm a bit like, oh, uh, but no, listen, I'm going to go there fully expecting Paddy to win. I hope he does. And I hope he puts on a show more than anything because... You know, his last one was, I think he was, um, I always think he was unfairly criticised. He was, mm. Listen, criticised his performance, yeah, he'll probably hold his hand up and say that, but he didn't give himself the decision, that was the officials. But yeah, yeah. he's somehow now kind of got the flack for mm. for maybe a bad decision or 
however you thought of it. So I want him not only to win, I hope to God he puts on a puts on a standout performance. And the thing is, going back to your concerns around maybe Tony Ferguson's extreme level of fitness coming into this fight, if Paddy blows him away in 30 seconds, it doesn't matter how fit you are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I've just seen as well on the gym, I'm sure he just got a second down, I think, on his black belt or mm. something. So he's... Um, Dedication. He's flying. Yeah. Uh, and I cannot wait to see him. Yeah, put on a show and see him in the after party. Yeah, and hopefully yes. Liverpool have done a job yes, over United yes. as well. So double celebration. Mm. And we've got Leon Edwards as well fighting that same night, defending his okay. title. So the monster. What time is it in Vegas when the... Um, on the... So nine o'clock, I think, eight, nine o'clock. Is it? Decent. So, yeah. Um, I think. So there could be a Montrex long, slash long Paddy slash Leon Scouse party out wow. there. Class. So I'll be there for that. But uh, no, listen, everyone, thanks for the support. Again, there'll be a few interviews going on Patreon with all the Squid Game stuff. One with me and Gary. Um, one with Mutty, one of the uh, characters in it. Characters. characters. <laughs> <laughs> one of the competitors in it. <laughs> and also Amanda, who done really well. So if you're into the Squid Games, get on Patreon, watch them. And yeah, have a boss weekend.